Hello everyone! In today's video we are going to make a deep dive into white light sources and their spectra. As we may already know, white light consists of all possible colors mixed together. So, to study a spectrum of any light source, we need to decompose its light into all colors it consists of. And when I say colors, I mean light of certain wavelengths. We need a special tool to split a white light into all colors. It is a diffraction grating. You may notice that this grating has a bit like compact disc look to it. And I should say that every single compact disc is a diffraction grating itself. Everything can be a diffraction grating if its surface has a groove with equal spacing in about micrometer range. Throughout this video we will use this setup. Light from our light sources will hit this grating at some incidence angle. Then we will observe a reflection at the angle equal to the incidence. No color splitting will occur here. We will direct this reflected beam to the spectrometer to have a rather digital spectrum representation. But here, at some different angles from the regular reflection, we will observe diffracted light. I will place a screen here to enjoy and then visually analyze a spectrum of a light source. Let's start with something simple. Here is a spectrum of incandescent lamp. It has continuous nature with smooth transition from blue to red. We can notice this spectrum is lacking blue intensities in comparison to red ones. That's why we perceive this light as warm. Incandescent lamp is the closest to the sunlight from spectroscopic point of view. The reason is they are both emitting thermal radiation and obey the same physics law. In other words, that's light emitted by very hot objects. So, let's see the spectrum of sunlight. In this setup, I will use a fiber optic cable to conveniently deliver sunlight from my window to a shaded tent. At the first glance, sunlight spectrum is quite the same as for incandescent lamp. It has the same continuous nature. But if we look closely, we can see these tiny notches here and there in solar spectrum. These notches are so-called Fraunhofer lines. Each absorption line can be viewed as some energy subtracted from a solar spectrum by atoms to switch between their electron orbitals. So every atom has a set of allowed jumps with known energies between electron orbitals. And by looking at wavelengths of some spectral band, we can guess which element it belongs to. So this solar spectrum tells us that sunlight had met at least calcium, magnesium, hydrogen and iron atoms before hitting an Earth's surface. Next up is gas discharge lamp, typically used in car headlights. We used to call them xenon lamps, but in fact they are metal halide lamps. In contrast to incandescent, where light produced by hot body, gas discharge lamps produce light from glowing plasma. Let's look at the spectrum. It has a lot of sharp spikes. And as we already know about atomic absorption lines, it's time to discuss atomic emission lines. They both have a common nature. They are energy portions needed for an atom to switch some of its electron orbitals. When electron goes from low to high orbital, it absorbs required amount of energy, and we see a dark absorption line on spectrum. And when electron goes from high to low orbital, it emits exactly the same amount of energy in form of light, and we see a bright emission line. On our spectrum, we can observe sets of lines that belong to different elements. In this case, they are mercury, xenon, scandium, and sodium. Next lamp we are going to look is high pressure sodium lamp. Sodium lamps are well known for its use as street lights, and they can be easily spotted for their yellow color. Amazing part of this yellow color is quantum nature. Sodium outer electron in excited state jumps one orbital higher than usual and then returns back. This transition costs about 2 electron volt of energy in both ways. On return way from excited state, this amount of energy releases in form of light. And 2 electron volt of energy corresponds roughly to 590 nanometer wavelengths. 
We can witness this band on the spectrum as a sharp peak and bright yellow spot below. So you see, it's not just yellow. It's 2 electron volt relaxation energy from 3p to 3s sodium orbital yellow. As you may notice, this yellow sodium peak is split into two distinct spikes, so called sodium doublet. If you rewind this video to the solar spectrum part, you may notice D1 and D2 sodium Fraunhofer lines. These lines are exactly the same as in sodium lump spectrum, except they are inverted and appear as dark spots. That means two electron volt energy component of solar spectrum is absorbed by sodium atoms to rise electron from 3s to 3p orbital. Let's move to our next light source, compact fluorescent lamp. It functionally consists of two parts. First one is mercury gas discharge lamp, glowing plasma type of lamps we discussed earlier. And the second one is fluorescent phosphos this lamp is covered with from the inside, hence the name fluorescent. On the spectrum we can clearly see a few bands from glowing mercury plasma. Very bright ultraviolet from mercury is used to excite fluorescence of phosphors, which contain terbium and europium compounds. And the last but not least white source we are going to review today is LED. The idea behind LEDs is similar to the compact fluorescent lamps, with few exceptions. It's ultraviolet or blue light source which excites a fluorescence of some phosphors. And when combined they produce white light. In case of LED, indium gallium nitride is used to provide excitation for the phosphors. And typically cerium compounds are used as phosphors which emit broadband yellow light. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.